remain standing. Uh, thank you, brothers. For St. John 17. Well, everybody feeling fine? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, I, think, I don't think you're going to forget that one too soon. Huh? Amen. See, this part says, uh, yeah, and this part says, no. Amen. So you get caught up in the middle there somewhere. Get your amens hung up. Amen. Praise God. Well, amen. I don't, I don't have anything to lose. I have everything to gain. So praise God. I'm going to preach what God told me to say. Amen. That's the way I feel this morning. Tired and weary don't know don't see nobody and nothing amen so don't get in my way now i'm only kidding you praise god i got a little a soft paddle that's all amen praise god saint john 17 i start speaking like that i won't have anybody left brother bob be trying to break his arm getting out of here amen so saint john 17 i invite your attention amen and you find the mark of St. John 20 and Revelation 10. These words spake Jesus, St. John 17, and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Isn't that wonderful? For the foundation of the world, God gave X amount and X amount every generation. And then Jesus, the word, amen, through the ministry and the messengers, when they would speak that word in that age or whatever, well, God has given so many, and so many shall come. Praise God. So there's nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Who's going out? Who won't praise God? They got nothing to do with it. So many has been given, and so many will come. And hell or high water won't stop them, praise God, because God has spoken it, and so shall it be. Amen. When you begin to feel, uh, talk like that, then you begin to know who you are, brother. Those muscles begin to grow out, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is the season where you're going to know who you are. You're going to be planted down. Amen. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could stand at the resurrection and say that? God pulled me out of school and pulled me out of here and pulled me out of there and told me to finish the work and to glorify me on this earth. And you can stand there, that last angel stands there with that last trumpet, praise God. And you can stand there adopted and anointed, praise God. Say, I finished the work, praise Kept the course. Amen. Praise God. Fought a good fight. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the Christian. Not slip slagging here and there. Amen. Stand there. Amen. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Isn't that wonderful? St. John 20, verse 30. I'm finishing up on these three virtues. Amen. March 31st, April 7th, and April 28th. This is the third one. Amen. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, the, and that believing you might have life through his name. And for the fourth time, we have to, we're going to go to that angel, and I hope is, they finally get there. We've been trying to go to him since a long time, since 1974, then more specifically in 1988, and tied it into the reading of the seven seals, and see, like we still couldn't get there. So I should say, play those two tapes back on Wednesday, 
speak to him about going to the angel on the 14th of April. He said, now come back today and nail it down. Amen. Amen. We don't have no more time to wait for you to go to the angel. Praise God. Revelation 10, 8. And the voice which you heard from heaven spake to me again. This is the second time. Amen. And said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Now, do you understand that there, class? This angel is standing where? On 42nd Street or would he be standing here? St. Patty's or would he be here? Some good Baptist church or over there? Or would he be here? In New York City. With all the filth. With all the sin. Great grace. Is that correct? Can we say amen? amen. Shout it out. Sister Madeline told you to, to, to come to this man who, who, who you think is here this morning. It'll be so humble and simple. Behold, I come as a thief. Then came Jesus. 17 years, but he's here. See it picking up? Another octave is beginning to go up. He's really here. And I went to the angel. Let that be your testimony today. And said unto him, give me the, the little book. He said unto me, take it. Eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Oh, how I can testify about that. Brother, it was in my belly for 17 years bitter. When I had to stand up and say the seven thunders, seven thunders for 17 years in America and in Canada and Europe and South Africa and the West Indies, I was slain and cursed and persecuted for saying, give me the book, for eating the book. It was sweet when that revelation come about the thunders and so forth. But when I had to stand up and tell the brethren because they didn't hear it first, and I had to say it, amen, then I was cursed. So I've been through my bitterness time. It's time for you to go through it. It's time for you to stand out against whoever this friend of whoever it is. Amen. Take a stand for Jesus. See, I'm giving my testimony. I've lived it. Amen. I know. What people See, the people was not supposed to know. So I'm, that's why he had to give me brotherly kindness to forgive them before they even would open their mouths up. I forgave him before the foundation of the world. Praise God. Amen. I did. I was in Christ forgiving them. As he forgave me, I forgave them. Oh, come on, brother. Uh, uh, where was now? We in the word now. You better have been reading and studying this message. Amen. And I took a little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And it was, and as soon as I eaten it up, my belly was bitter. Now, this is identified on blasphemous names for the age. Brother Bram said, just as every, uh, uh, he said, just as every age met their requirement, Paul, Norenius, and Martin, Columbus, Luther, Wesley, and Malachi, and there, so will that seventh age meet their requirement on world falling apart. Do you know what that means? That means that we're in this message, and our requirement is brotherly kindness, forgiveness. And the prophet prophesied that we would meet that requirement. He would let all kind of tests come and demons come against you, family come against you for nothing. Just so that you can meet that requirement. I forgive you, brother. I love you. I forgive you. That's the message. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again and before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. May God have blessed and read of his word. Well, praise God. Uh, you may be seated. Amen. Well, everybody feeling fine? Glory. Strange thing. I had this message here. I actually preached it several years ago, but uh, to kind of bring it up to date, I felt that the, the knowledge to know Christ and Brother Keith Campbell from 
Tulsa sent me a letter, a beautiful letter the other day. And while I have, I see, I stayed home last Sunday because I knew the wedding would be this uh, weekend and there would be no way I could <laughs> study. So I stayed home last Sunday and studied and, and made up this message. Amen. And I had a letter that was a little signed to me, uh, Brother Keith. And he said, P.S., I always liked the story of the past that Brother Musgrove always has been saying for a long time about the president. He said, many people know about Jesus, but they don't know him. There is a difference, a big difference. If I were to tell you I know about the President of the United States, you would say, big deal, everybody does. But if I told you I personally know and have met and have shook the hand of the President of the United States, then that would really be something different. You would say, wow, you personally know the President of the United States. So to really know Christ is something very different than to know about him. And that's what I've been laboring for for 17 years to get you to know him, not just about him. Amen. So to really know Christ is something very different from to know about him. Many, many multitudes know about him and spend their whole lives studying him. And many in the message study the message about him being revealed in Malachi 4. But they still don't know him. They in the message where him came. And reveal himself and they still don't know him because they study intellectually about him so our purpose this morning is for you to go to him and finally walk out these doors knowing him and not just about him amen you may be seated many 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 multitudes know about him and spend their whole lives studying him but only very few actually know him to know him is life. There's a difference. That's the difference between the Holy Ghost and others who know about him. Person received the Holy Ghost, they know him from the beginning. Amen, brother. Come on now, praise God. Yes, sir. So I got a beautiful letter from Sister Henrietta of Pluvoy, and she's to be married to Brother Marcel, and then she was telling me uh, uh, how um, uh, the, the, this message of some have compassion back there on February 17th. Really, she saw the revelation there, forgiveness and so forth. And then she, her testimony was that then uh, Brother Robledo preached Easter morning. He really said some things that really shook her up. And she felt like she couldn't forgive, thing, forgive people that had done so many things to her. I guess it's back in Haiti somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, she couldn't. And she prayed throughout Easter day. And we up until uh, Monday morning at 1 o'clock in the morning, still praying to, to, to want to forgive and forget, you see. And then uh, finally, she's somewhere during the week, it left her. And then she walked in here Sunday morning, April 7th, and there was the message, then came Jesus. And Jesus met her, and she says, baptize her with the Holy Ghost and fire. Because she forgave. And you cannot receive the Holy Ghost unless you forgive and forget. So I'm not looking for 15 to be baptized. It's just one. Amen. So that's the way it's going to be. When you can forgive and give up and forget about it. And don't think it, what was done to you was worse than what was done to that one. That's the spirit that, that won't die. You may be seated. You don't understand, Lord, but see, the, the way it happened to me on this day and, and going over there on and this street, that was worse than, than what they did. See, man, now, because the way it happened to me, well, who are you? I mean, the Lord said, what's all this nonsense you're, talking, you're trying to tell me? The word says, when you stand praying, if you have ought to drop it. I can't go over my word. I don't care if you've been here for 25 years, but I cannot go with my word, sister. 
No, you have to go back and give the worst one, the one that did the worst things to you. Until you forgive her, I will not forgive you. So be delivered today. Because you're going to know him from the beginning. It wasn't so from the beginning. Hallelujah. So you understand now. Praise God. So to know him, not about him. And in this message, they've been knowing about him in books and quotes and tapes. That's about him. But we preach him crucified. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. My subject is that voice spake again. The voice spoke and the shout went out. Let that voice speak again and the voice of the archangel will go out. Catch what I'm saying? And how, behold, I come as a thief, amen, between, before the California earthquake and between the Gulf War. I come in there somewhere. Maybe I come to see Thomas. Then came Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just think. If these messages didn't come back around, what, what, what would be in Georgia? Wouldn't be nothing there. Amen. Because I saw, I told a brother, they're saying, oh, those three messages, uh, wave sheath and so forth, and uh, some have compassion, and ministry, morning star, what a blessing and going on, and what it means to the church, and all the different ones are telling me the same thing. And I said, yes, yeah, fine. I said, now, in your own church, you're having a wonderful revival, and the people are being revived in your church. Now, take that anointing and inspiration to the other groups that you know fully well for the last 17 years and you got odds go into their church the one maybe left your church and went to another church and this family left this family split up huh go to everyone that left your particular church and went to this one and went to that one and go back there and say I love you I forgive you then uh, you come back and tell me oh we're having a wonderful time brother Coleman and I said wonderful I said, brother, I didn't want to preach no more after last year. That's why, because I'm preaching to people right here, and it's inspiration, and they won't forgive one another. And the Holy Spirit told me, that's it. He said, he can't go no further. And, but in each church, oh, they have a revival because they're own kind. <laughs> Your own kind, you're forgiven. But you got to love the unlovely. You got to love the one and forgive. The ones that did the worst things to you. I mean, according to what you think anyway. But not according to what God says. So you may be seated. Hallelujah. So my title is to know him from the beginning. My subject is that voice spake again. Go and take that little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Amen. Well, how many enjoyed the wedding that was privileged to be there yesterday? The beautiful wedding, Brother Antonio and uh, Antonino and Sister Nada. And it was quite something there at the, uh, it, that's right, amen. <laughs> it was really something there. That, that cake cutting was something. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we certainly want to welcome uh, Reverend uh, uh, Kwame uh, Osei, uh, the United Methodist Church. And he's here with Brother Wilson Jimma. You stand up, brother. We can welcome you here. Amen. <laughs> He's from Ghana, I believe. Amen. And he's a graduate of ORU, and he's going back there for his master's. So he come and he phoned Brother Wilson. They were boyhood chums. See, and see, both he and Christ, and both of you stay together. Amen. You didn't cut the, the line. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's wonderful. We welcome you here, brother, and we thank God that you're here. And may you, you get your master's, praise God, in ORU. Oh, oh, doctorate. Oh, oh, I mean, I mean, I had you too low. Amen. Praise God. You have to hire, hire, hire. You got a higher calling. Amen. Yes, sir. So God bless you there, brother. Amen. And we got a higher calling here too. Amen. We're trying to get them up here. Praise God. Amen. Glory. So praise God. And I want to welcome the, and Sister Marilyn, my God. When she sang a song, I think it was uh, Sister Marla. I think it was that, is that right, Sister Marla? She sang it at your, uh, um, is that right, Sister Marla? The 20, on the 25th, that's when it was, yeah. And when she sang it, God spoke to me. 
Amen. I think I told her. Amen. Yeah. How shocked I was when I heard that you're going to sing it again this morning. Amen. Come to this man, the very thing I'm preaching. Amen. Oh, my. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Mellon. Amen. Praise God. Uh, how many years went down, down the line? Praise God. And we certainly want to welcome the entire Mara family. They're up there in the balcony uh, with the headsets. want to welcome them here for coming over for the wedding of their son. <laughs> Praise God. Bless my brother and his family. And brother and sister Barn Traeger. Uh, from uh, Indiana, Brother Tommy's Church, and uh, Sister Rita, and Brother Jim Bontrager, and our Brother Daniels, and, and Stephanie Kohlenbrenner, all the way from Germany, and our brother here from Florida, uh, Perez cousin, I believe, and uh, so we thank God that they're here, and uh, like I say, we want a special blessing upon Brother and Sister Wright, amen. And all the other visitors, may God bless you. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise God. So, friends, now what I'm doing, trying to do, you, you pray that God give me the strength. Uh, you've got to go to that angel. It must be clear that God would bring that back and just be the fourth time. That is, it's, it's uh, imperative. It's imperative. Uh, I don't know, you don't know how much to tell you because if you was here Easter or seen uh, the road to Mayor's message, you would know that something happened here. And the Holy Spirit said, after 17 years of preaching, that is finished. And then he says, now, you go to Thomas uh, eight days later. So, I don't know what to tell you. Then. So, therefore, that's all. Oh, finish that. So, now you go to the angel. And I spoke to you on the 14th, and then the Wednesday was on the tape, then last Wednesday on the tape, and now today is the fourth time. And as you know, wouldn't it be wonderful that we'd be sitting down in Georgia and everybody with a, 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 a real revelation of brotherly kindness and all those who had gone to different groups and split up and was all gathered in there together and before the meeting even started, they started uh, going to one another's rooms and having prayer and, and making things right. Brother Brown said that on the tape. He said they're going from room to room, uh, making things right, getting the arts out. Wouldn't the Holy Spirit come down in a meeting like that? Oh, my. My, don't hold any bitterness in your heart. Amen. You could take that on with you to tribulation and period in hell somewhere. Amen. Forgive it. What's that mean? You're going to let that block you from going to heaven? No. No way. Amen. So, uh, so now we want to speak, um, Brother Robledo, myself, with the strength of the Lord, the next eight Sundays, including today, to see if something... Uh, we can hear the rustling of the top of the mulberry tree or something. And some of you people can get sealed up. Amen. Like our sister Henrietta was sealed on April the 7th. So a little season from today. Come see this man. And sister Madeline is singing about it and, and, and be washed in the blood. Oh, praise God. So from April 28th to June 16th, just before the Macon, Georgia meeting, to get some of you sealed up for service. And now you're going to have to pray for me because I want to have two prayer lines, May 12th and May 26th. It would be A and O, and then, of course, the out-of-towners, whichever uh, Sunday that they will fall into, and we'll get it straight. That's what I want to do. If God give me the strength. Amen. So you be praying. I feel maybe you have a little bit more faith now. Some of you have seen your names in the, in the book of redemption, and so maybe you have faith to get healed now. You see a name there where well, he died for your healing and died for your, your, the Holy Ghost. Then this, you come through here, I'm anointed, we're anointed, and you're anointed. Fire falls. So that's why I haven't attempted to do it again. There was enough power in here to heal everybody in 1986, but a virtue powerful service, but there was no faith on the line. So I hope there's some faith on that line. So before we get to May 12th, we want to go to that angel. Anything can happen. Amen. Uh, wouldn't you like to see another September, October, November, 1983? You remember September 11th? The Holy Spirit just poured out for about five hours. Wouldn't you like to see that today or any day break out? We can have it, you know. Oh, we're building to it. 
Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Another time around. Glory. Be encouraged. <clears throat> but first, we got to know him. Amen. Okay, now, you may be seated. Now, God gives us three things. He reveals faith, and then he pours out the uh, virtue and knowledge. And just these little three messages here, he says, as far as you go, he says, and then, uh, then, then uh, you just uh, preach these three here, and then you move on, and then they themselves got to catch it, and get a revelation, then everybody gets sealed. Amen. Then they died as a death of a corn of wheat, and then they'll begin to show their temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness. You see? So now to know him from the beginning is the last message to bring up the new people to the present time. St. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. St. John uh, 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 4 through 5, glory of God. The glory of God is for the bride, which glory he had before the world began. And I just read that. And in your COD book, page 15, paragraph uh, 2930. But look, now are we looking, the whole church now, we're standing on a great big banister, watching what God's doing. And we'll get right down to this question here. And you see how he brings it in. Now, no one has seen God. Now, the next thing we begin to see by the eyes of supernatural looking. See, that's supernatural. When you sit there in the natural just looking at me, I don't see no supernatural. And that's why I get exasperated. I said, well, what? They're just staring at me. It's like, get in the spirit. I mean, uh, you don't get spooky. I mean, but uh, uh, close your eyes or do something. Amen. But just stare at me. Amen. Uh, amen. See? Well, amen. So we see a little, uh, okay, the eyes of supernatural looking. Now, don't see something that's not there. Amen. And say, I saw this, I saw that, you know. No, not that either, see. We see a little white light forming out there. What is that? That was called by Bible readers logos, the anointed or the anointing. As I was going to say, the part of God began to develop. God was just there. And he can't be God until he has an object to, to, to worship him. God is an object of worship. Just great spirit. There. Covered all things, knew, knew all things there. But when did he start? He was there. In the beginning. Don't blow your mind out trying to figure when. The, the theologians, the doctorates, the masters can only go to St. John 1. Is that correct, brother? In the beginning. That's as far as you can go. And when you go to your doctorate, you ain't going any further. Great. He knows this. He's not the doctorates or whatever it is, PhDs. He cannot go any further than in the beginning, God. They can't go no further. Now, I'm telling you something, brother. The only way you can go further than St. John 1 is to hear a message from a prophet who was able to go way back. Hallelujah. To hear a message of a prophet that was back before the beginning. Glory. That's the only way. The only way. Hallelujah. You may be seated. <clears throat> and uh, we happen to, uh, ours is a little different. It's not a classroom, but this is a big, is this open. But we're actually going for our doctors also on the third phase. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's right, uh, Dr. Balomo and Dr. Fiore over here. Praise God. So now, uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get that down. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. And, I, and part of God began to develop it to, so human beings could have some type of an idea of what it was. Amen. Was it a little low or a little light moving? That was the word of God. Now, God gave himself birth to this son, which was before there was even an Adam or heir to make an Adam. That was, see, Jesus said, glorify me, Father. I read the scripture. With the glory that we had before the foundation of the world. See, way back yonder. My, St. John 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us. God unfolding himself into a human being. That we might talk to him and speak to him and handle him and, oh, praise, shake his hand and sit down and break bread with him. Praise God. 
and we will drink the communion with him in the end after the battle's over. After the battle's over, praise God. Hallelujah. After battling the demons that won't let you forgive or, or defeat those demons and see if you don't be purged out and feel light as a feather. No more weight on your shoulders no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Free like an eagle. Amen. You may be seated. How many understand about the, the white light and, and then the seven rainbows coming out of the white light? Would you like to hear an article about that? Huh? Okay. Um, December 11, 1990 in the Newsday Long Island paper, discoveries for young people. How come? Is, is the caption, the colors of the rainbow and the sun. Amen. I thought I'd read it to you. What does the sun, ch uh, why does the sun change color? Sometimes it's red or orange, and other times it's yellow, writes Jeremy Tan, a second grader in Merrick. Imagine you are orbiting the Earth in the space shuttle. You look out at the sun glowing against the inky black of space, and it appears white. Or imagine standing on the surface of the moon and gazing up at the sun from there, it would also look white. But here on Earth, look at the sun through the blanket of air surrounding our planet, the sun normally looks yellow. At sunrise and sunset, it may look red or orange or pink. How come? Our star is not really changing colors hour by hour way out there in space. It glows in white light all the time. It glows as Elohim. That white light that went down between Abraham's sacrifices. Hallelujah. That's the white light. That's him from the beginning. To know him, that white light from the beginning. Praise God. Amen. Now you learn a little something now. Elohim, white light. Amen. It glows in white all the time. The clue is that the sun's color appears to change only when you look at it through the Earth's atmosphere. Remember, there is no air in space or around the moon. Looking at the sun through air is like looking through a veil. Sunlight, which has to pass through the air, before it reaches our eyes, is changed by its trip. So as God, the white light began to unfold and coming on down to the earth, it began to, be, began to change color red and yellow and orange and green and blue and indigo and brotherly kindness. Seven spirits coming down from glory. But way back it was white light. Oh, hallelujah. Praise seven spirits, seven eyes, seven lambs, seven voices, seven, seven lambs. My God, seven messages, seven stars, seven thunders, seven virtues. Oh, that white light coming down. My God. To know him from the beginning. And one of his attributes is brotherly kindness he come down to forgive us man amen his son died the death praise God on the cross that we might be saved hallelujah and God forgave us our sins hallelujah and we catch this revelation then we in turn forgive our brother and our sister no matter how many sins they have committed we forgive them how many times 70 times 7 so that our, our garments won't be spotted with the flesh. Oh, for wanting the flesh to be vindicated. You did this to me as a Pharisee. Praise God. But we are God's children. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Yes, sir. Well, where's that now? Looking at the sun through the ears, like looking through the, the veil. That's right. It, it, uh, uh, as before it reaches our eyes, it's changed by its trips. Yes, sir. And by the time they got down to us, it was in the color of brotherly kindness. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, <clears throat> praise God. The light produced inside the sun is white light, but white light contains within it many colors, all the colors of the rainbow. Amen. If you look at a at white light through a prism, you will see the rainbow. Three-cornered prism, you see a rainbow. Amen. Amen. The prism splits the white light into colors. Like a comb separating hair into its individual strands. As a woman combs her hair or a man and goes into individual strands. And so as they comb through the white light, it went into seven strands. Amen. Praise God. And Samson had those seven strands. Hallelujah. All seven little strands on the back. He said, oh, Lord, once more, I can reach back and feel them seven strands. Hallelujah. That white light. My God, praise God. Come alive, New York. Praise God. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Maybe see the, the prism splits the white light into colors like a comb separating here into individual strands. White light enters the prism Bands of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet light stream out the other side. Something so, uh, similar happens when sunlight passes through the raindrops, making a rainbow in the sky. White light is invisible, invisibly full of color as it zips through the space at 186,000 miles per second. And when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, some of the light slices cleanly through, reaching the ground untouched, staying white. Sometimes. Amen. But since uh, the Earth's air is made of molecules such as nitrogen and oxygen, some of the light will run into these molecules on its way down. And when it does, light is scattered. Yes, sir. It is mostly bluish light that is scattered out of the white light beam. So by the time sunlight reaches our eyes, most of the blue end of the spectrum, the blues and purples, is scattered out into the sky. This is uh, what makes the blue sky, by the way. Because it's black out there, amen. You see blue sky, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Me, you see, we are getting our doctorate here this morning, amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> Praise God. Meanwhile, the sunbeam, having lost his blues. Isn't that nice? The sunbeam lost his blues. <laughs> did, you, did you lose your blues? Uh, the Helen is gone. She lost her blues. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. She lost the blues. You, you have a little uh, sense of humor. You know? <laughs> you should have caught it right away. I lost the blues. Oh, praise God. You know? Amen. Praise God. Having lost his blues is now much yellower since the colors that are left in the beam are the warm colors. So instead of white, the sun looks uh, yellow to us. At sunrise or sunset, an even more dramatic change occurs. Sunlight must travel through an even thicker layer of air that it does, uh, than it does through the rest of the day. Why? When the sun is overhead, the light passes through just the air above us. Air that becomes thinner and thinner higher up. But when the sun is near the horizon, its light must pass through many thick layers of air, those nearest to the ground. The light runs into even more air molecules than usual. So even more of the blue and of the spectrum is scattered out of the light beam. This leaves only orange and red sunlight in the beam. And so we see the sun as a fiery orange ball, getting redder and redder as it sinks, uh, as it sinks lower into the sky, going down in the west. So praise God, you understand? So when you hear me speak about white light and then seven rainbows, you know what it is? It's God. Then seven manifestations of the one Holy Spirit white light. See what I'm saying? Not seven different ones, seven manifestations, not seven spirits separate, 
the seven manifestations of the white light diffused on the earth. Praise God. <clears throat> oh, glorify me, Father, with the glory that we had before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> so this bride <clears throat> wants to be covered by this glory from the foundation of the world. Amen? Amen. That's what she's striving for. St. John 3. Amen. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee. It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with, and understand you, the only time and real God. Yes, sir. And likewise, to know him, Jesus, as the Christ anointed one, the Messiah, the kinsman redeemer, whom you have sent in, in these last days in, through Malachi 4, St. Luke 17, 30, Revelation 10, to open the book of redemption rights and all the mysteries about uh, who God is and what God is and his nature, his being, and how he's one God and not three gods and all these mysteries plus the seven thunders and they have been revealed for one main purpose, that we might know God. I'm going to bring 17 years down to the day that you might know him from the beginning. So it ain't got nothing to do with Brother Coleman. It's that you might know him from the beginning. Praise God. I don't get no glory out of him. Praise God. God gets all the glory. We'll give all the glory to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> and to know God is life eternal. St. John 20 here, 30, 31. All of the signs and wonders and miracles that were done through Malachi 4, 3 pulls and the same life signs and spirit that will be revealed in the bride are done that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And his name is his person, his life, his word. And you got to know him. You got to know that word. Yes, sir. And people back up from the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Inspiration then is to know him from the beginning. Because when we know him from the beginning, that is life eternal revealed to us. He that hath the Son hath life everlasting. Oh, he that hath the Son, the Word. Give me that book. I have life everlasting. I see my name. Hallelujah. I'm in love with, the, with all my friends, my enemies. Lord, bless my enemies. Bless everybody. I'm on my way to heaven. Praise God. Diffusing the light out. The white light is in me. And coming through my body is seven manifestations of the rainbows. You see uh, faith and virtue and knowledge and tempest and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness diffused out. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, church. Revelation 10, 8 through 11. What a blessed privilege the bride has today through Malachi 4's message of the revelation of the book of redemption that is now open in the hand of the angel. Now, he's not standing on 42nd Street. Neither is down in Rockefeller Center, nowhere like that. He's not next door. He's right here. Yeah. If you want him, come see this man. Yeah. See him in your seat, in the, up in the balcony, and in the basement. Praise God. Malachi 4 has restored back the faith. Amen. And just to drop his message back in here again here. Um, Revelation Book of Symbols, page 12, paragraph 65, 4. So remember, Daniel was told by the angel. Daniel heard seven thunders. They uttered their voices. Daniel grabbed his pen and started to write. And the angel said, don't you write it. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Let's get into it just about the next five minutes, will you? Don't write it. John saw the same thing, and, and it had already been written outside the Bible. And had seven seals on the back of the book that no man could open those seals on the back of the book. That was them voices. Here's the Bible written, see, which is a mystery itself. Amen. Let's look and figure this out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. That's the mystery itself. 
But on the back side of the Bible, the revelations were shown to Daniel and John back here. The revelations of this. See? Them voices open up this. Yes, sir. Praise God. On the back side of the Bible, the revelation was shown to Daniel. Say that there's seven voices to be uttered, and no man could open, no man know uh, uh, what it was. But the Bible said it was, uh, it told Daniel and also John that in the days, uh, these seven voices would be known by the real true church. Um, you get it? Can you see where the false and counterfeit is trying their best to keep great men from places like that? Can you see what, what was going on in that in 17 years? I was trying to preach you to these places. And all these spirits was coming against me to keep me away from these uh, promises. I give you the land. Hallelujah. And now we're here. Glory, we overcome. We wrestle and prevail. Glory. They couldn't keep us out of there. Now do you understand what this book is? Them voices, the revelations of the entire book. When you get this revelation at you, first of all, your name is there. And then you, you just, and then you got the sun. Then you got life. Hollow. You feel different. You love everybody. You forgive everybody. Amen. And then you go on and people curse you and you overcome all this nonsense. You're going to heaven. You ain't got anything to do with that. You're not from here. You only come down here for testimony. That's all. I come from heaven. I'm going back to heaven. I got heaven on my mind. I'm heaven bound. I'm bound for the promised land. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. God be praised. Yes, sir. Don't you feel the same way? What are you coming in here for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, sir. Amen. You may be seated. So did you get that? He said seven voices on the backside. And the angels standing there with that little book. Here today. Then the believer hears it. You got to preach it. Suppose for the last 17 years this wasn't preached. Oh, you would be picking your way through a maze of, in, uh, of interpretations. Then the believer recognizes it and acts upon it. And right in the hour of the jubilee time, the trumpet angel is blowing the trumpet for you to go free. Now, on United Time and Sign, he says there's two angels. So one is the message angel, Malachi 4, and there's a trumpet angel. As soon as Malachi 4 lays out those promises, that trumpet angel comes behind and blow, womp, womp, you're free. Here, come to me. I got the book. Hey, here's your name here. Amen. You're free now. Don't go back and sin no more. I set you free. Praise God. Don't do it no more. Yes, sir. Glory. You may be seated. Right in the hour of Jubilee time, the trumpet angel is blowing the trumpet for you to go free. And the Lord said, ladies, uh, eight Sundays right out here for them to go free. Praise God. And this is when we begin to get baptized, baptized, and suddenly the, the, the Holy Spirit will sweep in here like it's sweeping in here this morning. It'll begin to build. Praise God. It'll begin to build. They get sealed. It begin to build. They get healed. It begin to build. Praise God. Getting them ready for Georgia. Somebody going to be there. Glory! Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. The trumpet angel is blowing the trumpet for you to go free. After the, the message angel has revealed every mystery as a word of God. See, every, the mysteries come down from God. I don't care what mystery it is. It comes down from God to the prophet as the word. And Christ is revealing his own word. And Brother Brown preached a message of word. And that is mysteries. Every mystery as a seed. And I grabbed 
them seeds and begin to preach them. Hallelujah. Now, come on, get out of there now. Maybe seated. Now, remember, you can go free. See, it's actually going on now. It's going on right today. You can be free today before you walk out that door. I'm not waiting for next Sunday. I'm talking about now. You remember? Maybe seated. Remember when that trumpet was blowing and they had a time of the Jubilee and then the slaves that they had in Israel? Hebrew slaves. If they wanted to serve their master, then they had to go down to the synagogue and mark the air with an oil. Is that correct? While the Jubilee was going on? And then, and then there was others seeing their names. They were shouting and having a time. And they were dancing and shouting, praise God. My God. <laughs> yes, sir. And they're doing the rev. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. Aren't you free? Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen, Brother Blomo. I'm a cantor, man. Praise God. Okay, you may be seated. Praise God. And what happened then? If that man chose a woman to have the ear marked, remember, they were still an Israelite, but they received the mark of the beast. The ear was marked. They could never go free again. They remain at the household in Israel, a believer but a marked believer, and therefore they can never go free again. Amen? But they were still an intellectual believer. Don't you hear the angels singing? Don't you hear the trumpets blowing? Praise God is a glory. Hallelujah, Jubilee. Oh, don't do that. They remain in the church. But they couldn't go to the angel. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Go to that angel. Don't remain in the church paying your tithes. You get marked. Amen. Amen. Well, everybody happy now? Well, praise God. Yes, sir. Now, however, you may be seated the word has to be inspired to you for you to uh, react to it. Hearing it, recognizing it, and acting upon it. I'm just winding these things down here now so that it won't leave anybody out. Many people will hear but won't recognize it. Therefore, they cannot act upon it. They just don't understand it. That's all, you know. And God will say, this is the hour for you. This is your hour to see the revelation, uh, yet many cannot see it. And that's what God is standing here in Revelation 10, 8 through 11 is saying, the voice is saying, this is the hour for you right now, today, this morning. As I'm speaking, he is speaking also. Go to that angel and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the earth. Now, now well, who, how can I see the angel? Well, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your church is that angel. This anointing that you feel going out is the angel. It's not going to come any other way. So, and John represents the bride. And Brother Brown said on page 12, Book of Symbols, paragraph 68, God in his last days is going to draw true hearts from everywhere, no matter how much counterfeit and chaff the devil has, God will rise his church right out of it. It'll, watch, it'll be a ceiling for sure as I'm standing in this platform and the hour is at hand, the cold and formal is weaning away. The evangelical and the social gospel and all those other things are gone. The fantastic side is going on in such radical fanaticism till anybody blind could see it, but God is pulling his church out. The angel trumpet angel pulling it out yes sir so john represents that bride it will be a ceiling for sure oh could it start today man 
like September, October, November, my God, it'd be a ceiling for sure. The dynamics of your mechanics, but God is pulling his church out and they will have fellowship one with another. Yes, sir. First John 1, 1 through 3, I'll paraphrase it. I'm just quoting from there. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Hallelujah. Which we have looked upon and handled by our hands of a word of life. Praise God. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. That which we, that we, that ye may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with thee, Father, and with his son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. And these things we speak unto you this morning, that your joy may be full. These things were written for this response, for this purpose rather, that your joy may be filled. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Hallelujah, a white light that diffuses out seven colors and in him is no darkness at all. No unbelief, no doubt, no turning around and up and down and in and out. That's not in God. Hallelujah. And we walk in the light as he is in that light, dwelling in the season. Then we have fellowship one with the other. And that's why God brought these messages back around that we might go down to Georgia and have fellowship one with another and forgiving and I'm sorry my brother and praise God what a revival how the Holy Spirit can come down praise God in the seventh age requirement with all the prophets messages packed into your soul and you forgiving your brother and your sister Lord God down comes charity as charity and anoints the promise for this hour Oh, what would happen, praise God? What would happen, church? It would be here. What were you waiting for? You may be seated. And that's how we have fellowship one with another. Revelation 10, 8 through 11, in this season, this is the hour for you to go to that angel for the book. It's just over and over, he's exhorting you today. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is that angel standing right here. Paul said in Philippians 3, 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Now I'm talking to real Christians now, see? Not that I have already attained, amen, uh, or become satisfied with a certain station in life. No, not that. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Paul said, I press forward toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus, praise God. So do you see what it is today? See, it is the upward heavenly call of Elohim. You don't belong down here. You don't belong down here, praise God. God is calling you upward, 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 upward. Amen. Get out of here, praise God. Vamanos. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Pray. Amen. Vamanos, muchachos. Vamanos, muchachos. Let's get out of here. We get no time to hang around here. Time to get sealed up. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't care how much unbelief, how much chaff, and how much this, and how much that. God is going to seal again. There shall be another outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and it's going on right now. Glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. See, it's the upward heavenly call of Elohim calling you to your place of perfection in Christ Jesus. The anointed word. Amen, Brother Garcia. <laughs> Praise God. This place in, in the bride age was given to you in the low ghost before the world began. It was given to us. Oh. 
This is the revelation to the elected seeds of God standing here now, ready to go to that angel with the open book of their redemptive rights and ask for the book of redemption. Amen. They don't back up through fear. They don't back up through doubt. They don't back up through unbelief. They don't say, well, maybe the angel didn't call me because I did something this morning. The angel didn't call you this morning. He called you before the foundation of the world. He called you knowing what you were going to do. And your worst day, your worst day of sin, that's the day that he'll call you. Your worst mind battle, your worst lust. Hallelujah. That's when God is able to reach his hand down, bloody, bleeding, dripping with blood and pull you out of there say come home come home my son come home my daughter come home come home come home come home come home come see this man that's standing here in this church hallelujah praise god thank you jesus amen you may be seated they don't back up through fear and doubt and unbelief, but they keep pressing toward this high calling of God in Christ Jesus unto a perfect man on the earth. And uh, 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 Elohim is the seven fruits of perfection, making a perfect man on the earth. See, the bride's earthly goal. Amen. Here, St. John 15, I'll just skip through it, verse 1 through 7 and 8 there. In 15.2, uh, um, 15.2, let me see, where I, oh, maybe I'll read a little bit of it. St. John 15, yes, yeah, so I get a background, I just thought I'd stick it in here. Amen. Praise God. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he's taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see what's going on here now? St. John 15, 2. This branch is baptized with the Holy Ghost. It's born again. And that's fruit. Then the tree of life coming into you to give you eternal life by knowing him the word. Then he knows you. He said to the foolish virgin, I don't know you. You know what I'm saying now? So when the man knows the woman, yeah, he comes into, and Christ comes into your heart, and he knows you, and you know him. That's different. That's knowing him, and the others knowing about him, and reading the Bible, and praying, and whatever. That's knowing about him. But when he comes in there, phew, amen, you know him. But don't stop there. Press on to the high calling. So what does he do? He purged you right there with the Holy Ghost. He purged you right there. And every branch that beareth fruit born again is purged, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Then abiding, amen. Then you come down to abiding. Abide in me, verse 4. And I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it, except it abide in a vine. Uh, no more can you except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Here we come. And you shall, and ye shall ask, oh, what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now we come down to abiding in verse 5 through 8. What is that? That's place of trying. And many of you that were baptized in 1983 and all around there, you fixing to go into this place of trying. Amen. Amen. With your Holy Ghost. You Joshua's. You, and you're going to be tutored and child trained and sanctification of your human spirits, your behavior, your conduct, your maturing, your ripening, your seasoning. You're going to be seasoned out to adoption. You're going to f form character. 
because he want to give you the scepter charity but he got to see some character first before he gives you the power of the spoken word of god amen yes sir so he's trying to get this son to his high calling and then the word comes in its fullness. And then St. John 15, 7 and 8, adoption, abiding in the word to bring forth much fruit. So you got it now? Three degrees of fruit bearing, fruit, born again, new birth. More fruit, place of trying, purging, abiding, testing. Hallelujah. Behavior, sanctification. Hallelujah. Number three, much fruit. Adoption time, power and authority, ask what you will. Let there be a squirrel, little fishy, I give you your life. Sun, come out and shine for days. Moon, hang over Agilon. Oh, am I preaching too high? Huh? Glory. Now you're glorifying the Father on earth. Now you're bearing the seven fruits of 2 Peter 1. The seven spirits are manifested. Elohim in you bringing forth the seven fruits. The white light in you bringing forth the diffusing through your flesh. Seven fruits from the inward parts. Not only do you uh, uh, know the message, not only can you expound with the Pharisees and the doctorates and the like Jesus when he was 12 years old. See, I'm coming to it in a minute. Amen. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. But you can also uh, uh, pick up your thing. Amen. And begin to cast out devils and heal the sick. You can say, well, which is greater to, for to, to forgive sin or cast the devil out? Praise God. Amen. Sound like little messiahs on the earth to know him from the beginning. Glory. Praise God. Oh, let me hurry. I won't keep you too long today. Praise God. So now we see the three degrees. Do you see it? All right. First you're born. Amen. Praise God. Some get all excited, you know. Man, you're just born. Amen. You got to wait a while. And then more fruit. Then he purged you. Place of trying. That's why people get mad. Brother Coleman, he, uh, he blasted me, but he didn't blast the other one. Are you kidding me? If you got blasted, you were purged. <laughs> you were purged to bring forth more fruit. Maybe God didn't elect that person over there. They can't take it. But you can take it. So that's why the Holy Ghost directed his servant to come right to you. Because he wants you for his table. He knows what's in you. He made you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your downsetting and your uprising. He knows you from sun up to sundown. He knows all the sins you're going to fall for. He knows which ones you're going to fall for. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. So don't get mad when you come in on Sunday and you get purged and busted around a little bit. It's only God trying to purge you out to get more fruit. He's trying to get you over to verse 7. Amen. If my words abide in you, you never turn them down. You never got mad. You never started crying. You're picking on me. But the words was abiding in you. Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Then you come on down here, ask what you will. Oh, what a something, huh? To walk down the street would ask what you will. My God, my God, you may be seated. Want to open your Bibles up? To, uh, just a little uh, word lessons here. Amen. I told you we'd be back in the Word. It's where, where we used to preach a long time ago. Amen. But you couldn't hardly do it no more. People didn't know they were saved or what, you know. You had to keep telling them, keep telling them over and over and over the same thing. But we're in the Word. Amen. First John 2. Okay, 1 John 2, 12, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins, now get spiritual here and follow every little word in here now. Because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Now these little children are very happy 
because his sins are forgiven just for his namesake. And they're shouting and praising God. They don't know nothing else. They don't know anything about no thunders or nothing. Amen. They're just happy because they're saved. Now, verse 13, I write unto you, fathers. Why? Because you have known him that is from the beginning. Yes, sir. I write unto young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, now speaking twice to little children. And these are two different words I'm going to prove it out to you. Because you have known the father. The first little child just knows his sins are given. But this one has a different one here. He's a little bigger than the one here. And he knows, he, see the, he saw the father. Amen. Amen. Verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Don't you remember Brother Brown's uh, dream? Huh? He was coming down there, and there was uh, some young men shackled, and he started to help them get out of the shackles, and he said, no, they got out themselves, because they are strong. Amen. And they overcome the wicked one, praise God. And the word of God abideth in them. And he turned and saw Mrs. Fenton. And then he, then he said, Mrs. Fenton, and all these people are caged up there. And then she said, Brother Branham, he said, he used to carry her groceries. She says, these are fine people. You don't know them. You don't understand them. They don't understand you. She said, help those people. Oh, he also saw Brother Borders with something over his eye. And said, Brother Borders, Roy, get out of that there. He said that this is not enough in itself. See, but it, it was for the young men. They got out. Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. The young men got out. And, but brother boys, he couldn't get out of it. It was something over his eye, as some brother Bram said. And Mrs. Fenton, uh, another denominational group, see, and they're all in a cage there and so forth. He said, free those people. In the voice, he said, free those people. He said, I can't. I'm too small. There's bars there. And he's seen the rainbow appeared. Amen. <laughs> Elohim appeared there with the rainbow out there. And the voice says, uh, speak and free those people. And Brother Ram s stood back and straightened up, praise God, and said, house of hell. Give way to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all those people come a screaming out of that prison, praise God. May they come out today. Hallelujah. Praise. Amen. Whatever prison you're in today, may you come out of here today. Yes, sir. Now we got three groups here of spiritual growth. Three groups also here of spiritual development in the church. Amen. The little children and young men and fathers. Then we're going to find we have four groups because there's two types of young children. Amen. Now these three stages reveal the progression in spiritual maturity. At last, we have arrived to this station. Now, the fathers, of course, is, uh, is a sign of adoption time. Because they know him from the beginning. They've been, they've been to him, took the book, and everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Well, 17 years ago, they went to the angel in 1974 and asked the angel for the open book. That's why. <laughs> the book of redemption in the angel's hand place us in Elohim to bring forth the adoption sign. And the fathers are going to bring out the adoption sign who know him from the beginning. Somebody must come forth today as a sign to you as a father. Somebody got to step out here in this message as a father who knows him from the beginning. Now we can begin to understand St. John 17, 1 through 3, to know him is eternal life. And Saint, 1 John 2.12, John says he's writing to the little children because they know two things. 1 John 2.12, because your, your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. In 1 John 2.13, you have known the heavenly father. This is wonderful knowledge, but it is not enough knowledge with which to go out and do exploits for God. Amen. Just knowing the father and your sins are forgiven. This is little babies. See them now? And, uh, and, and number two here, uh, there is knowledge of the Son, but no capacity for service. But by revelation, we find that there is four stages here. St. John, uh, 1 John 2.12, little children. This is a Greek word, uh, T-E-K-N-I-A. 
This brother might know of it here, studying the Greek. It means infants, newborn. Like, you know, like, uh, you can't teach Pentecostal babies uh, supernatural things. You know what I mean? Okay. Your sins are forgiven and you are, in, are forgiven you for his namesake. They're happy with that. You, you, you preach around there with, mm, you get mad, you know. So I leave him alone, amen. First John 2.13, Greek, P-A-I-D-I-A, 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 something. It means little children. It means those able to walk and talk. Now that's a big difference from little infants and babies, though, those who can stand up and talk and walk and see what's going on and shout a little bit, you know, and say, praise the Lord. Ah, oh, amen. Praise God. From 1965 to 1991, little children and the, the feeding on seven seals of revelation and who God is, his name, his being all about him, knows about Malachi 4, little children ripening as seeds in the hot sun, learning the ABC so that the thunders on the backside can be revealed to them. All these little children waiting around here now for moving of the spirit. They've finally seen that, the, the book, the, the name was in that book. And they're getting ready to come to the end. They finally believe that God is right here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Nothing can stop them. No mind battles can stop them now. Yes, sir. So 1 John 2.13, little children, because you have known the Father. And 1 John 2.13, they're able to walk and talk. And the emphasis here is on subord uh, to be subordinate, amen, rather than on a relationship as in T-E-K-N-I-A in the first one. So now, praise God, do you see it? It's about time to go to that angel in Revelation 10 and eat the whole roll to make you strong, to overcome the evil one and climb out of your shackles as a young man. Amen. Praise God. In 1 John 2, 13 and 14, young man, I've written to you, young man, because you have a seven thunder revelation. You are strong, and the word of God abideth in you with a promise of much fruit. First, uh, St. John 15, 7. Number three, you have overcome the wicked one. Amen. You have a revelation of the two spirits operating with the framework of the church. And now it's time for you to die the death of a corn of wheat to become a father. Yes, sir. My, come on, young man. You know all these spirits in here. You dodge them and sidestep them, and, and you got to pat them. You pat them down. God bless you. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, sister. Yes, brother. Those are spirits. Amen. And the young men have learned to handle those spirits. That's why I put them in office, deacons and elders and so forth. They can handle these things here. Amen. Before 83, I hadn't had nobody. Amen. Praise God. But I got young men to do that. See? Got sisters down there, deacons, wives, and whatnot. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, young man. Go to that angel now. Praise God. And go get your redemptive rights. Go get your spoken word. Praise God. Hey, go get your refilling. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Go to the angel that's standing in Revelation 8, 10 through 11 with that book open. The book of redemption has revealed every spirit and given you a revelation of your redemptive rights. Come on, Caleb's. Climb that mountain for your inheritance. You have overcome the devil, praise God. To the two things of the little children, uh, sins are given for his namesake. And because you know the father, you have added three things, young men. And now the young men have five things. All you young men have five things. Your sins are forgiven for his namesake. You know the Father. They, you are strong. The word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. You have overcome the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Yes, sir. You overcome the wicked one. You wrestled with Satan for the last 17 years, praise God, and you stood. Hallelujah. Young man, the word of God is abiding in you. You overcome. The promises to the overcomers. Amen. Expressing the abiding result of past action. Young men in the Greek means uh, N-E-A-S-K-O-L. Means those grown to the prime of life. Oh, praise God. All you young men, young women, grown to the prime of life and no longer tossed about like little children growing up by interpretations and fallacies and winds of doctrine. 
Hallelujah. No, see, uh, in Ephesians 14, that you be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. The hour has come for the young men to come to their place of trying. Amen. Place of trying, forgetting all about what's in the world. For verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now the young men have got to come to this spot that they're finally going to give up the world. Amen. And the things of the world. And hallelujah, they're going to forget all about uh, what everybody likes in the world. And amen, you want to give up something. Some young men will have to give up all the sports. Body exercise profit very little. Praise God. And some are trying to go out of their way to, to get the sports and things. My God, don't even realize that, behold, I come quickly. And he, I'm coming as a thief. I'm dropping right down in on you to see what you're giving up. To see if you're dedicating yourself, rededicating yourself, throwing everything out. Praise God. Getting the trash out. Taking a shotgun and blast the television out. Boom. Praise God. I don't care if it's uh, 35 inches wide. Makes no difference. Praise God. Take a shotgun and blast it out. That's the young man. That's the vision. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. We want to see you young men become fathers. We want to see you adopted. Praise God. Yes, sir. My God, you're coming to a place of trying. Add them seven virtues to be sealed by charity. Then press on to be a father who knows him from the beginning. Oh, I exhort you today. Go to that angel. Praise God. And eat that little book. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Yes. You may be seated. There's something very special about the fathers. You have known him from the beginning. After learning the five other truths of little children, young men, the fathers with the Holy Ghost baptism and with years of place of training, trying. The fathers has been in there for years, sick and weary and up and down and all kind of unbelief against them, and they're still pressing on. That's the fathers. Now, the fathers are soon to be adopted, and the young children, the second ones, are soon to become young men. And the young men are soon to become fathers. So, hallelujah, then we're all going to wind up fathers. All across the earth. And everyone's going to know him from the beginning. Oh, hallelujah. The father with the amen. The father's been through tutoring, sanctification, maturing, and behavior. Then comes the revelation of Elohim and the book of redemption. Amen. And God has three ways of doing it. He don't ever change. He told you the first pull is always popularity. Everybody loves you. That's when you heal the sick and you cast out devils and you even raise the dead. So you do that in the first phase. Jesus did it and Brother Bram did it. But when you come down to declaring what the doctrine is, he said, then you enter into another phase. That's when they're, 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 uh, you're mean and you're only prophesying. Praise God over what's going to happen. So you're prophesying your own promises. Got nothing to do with no other church. You're solving in your own church in New York. Then some other brothers see the vision. They ask you to come to Trinidad or Europe or somewhere. Well, that's between you and them, not the other critics. Got nothing to do with those critics. I mean, do you understand that we stand here, we come from God? It doesn't make any difference who comes in here. We ain't got nothing to do with this here. God put us here. I mean, we are his children. And we sing the way we want to sing. We shout the way we want to shout. We do the things the way we want to do them. And we're not under a microscope of some other believers. We don't have anything to do with them. They have their own way of worshiping, and then we respect them. Like Brother Branham got down with the African and worship. 
Well, we'll go in there if they say, oh, man, we'll do the same thing. It's all right. Praise God. But if, if I feel that, brother, I've been sick for about 30 days. All of a sudden, I get a quickening and I get healed. And you mean I can't shout? I've been down on the great siege and, uh, amen. Oh, no. See, so long time ago, the Holy Spirit said, son, do what I tell you to do, not what the other think you should do. Yes, sir. Praise God. I thank God for that. Don't you? We're free. Uh, amen. Glory. You may be seated. Praise God. I'm going to finish up here now. Uh, then comes the revelation of Elohim and the book of redemption. Then the fathers learn something new, knowing the one who is from the beginning. Uh, it's a deeper revelation and experience which takes them into the, to the councils of the Godhead. The unsealing of the living testimony under the seventh seal. They learn not only what God has done, but they learn uh, why he did it. And uh, their roots go deeper into the eternal truth of Elohim. Praise God. Uh, yes, sir. Way back into the back parts of Elohim's mind before there ever was a beginning. Before there ever was a molecule. Praise God. There ever was anything. You go way back in there. And from the father's group comes forth the manifestation of the adopted sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. I can see it coming on now. Yes, sir. Ephesians 4, 11, 5, 4 ministry. Real adult Christian workers, praise God. They have overcome every spirit. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world trying to stop you. Greater, 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 more powerful, sharper. Praise God. Hallelujah. They know him in St. John 17, and to know him is eternal life. To know him from the beginning. You may be seated, the move is on. To, the little children must go to that angel and eat that book and become a young man. Praise God. And the young man must go to the angel and eat that book and become a father. And the father must go to the angel and eat that book and become adopted. So now who's going to rest on their laurels? Every station until God get them all together. Amen. Amen. So as a group, we're going to press on. Praise God. The Father is a sign of the new season. He's ready to be adopted. And God is ready to seal his living seven virtues with charity for adoption. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the church is that angel among us. See, hear it, recognize it, and act upon it. Revelation 10, 9, the bride acts upon the word. And I went to the angel, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit here today and said unto him, give me that little book. He said unto me, take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly, belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. When you have to digest it, it gets bitter. Everybody's against you. Go to the angel standing on earth with the open book in his hand. If you have a revelation, act upon it. Knowing that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is an angel standing right here this morning. Go to that angel and say, give me the book. Revelation 10, 10, acting upon the word. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. Oh, church. Well, anyway, 1974, 1991. Seven thunders of the seven voices of seven church ages. Now I'm going to throw you here. April 28, 1991. The seven thunders are the seven virtues of the seven church ages. Why did you say that revelation there? Because the prophet said on Statue of a Perfect Man, page 59, to the ministers, he said, Lord, let uh, virtue and knowledge pour out that these ministers may be able to pour the seven virtues into the bride to that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. Praise God. For 17 years, identify Malachi for message. It didn't die. It cannot die. My word shall not return to me void. So that's what I was doing for 17 years, identifying, Brother Bram said, here, 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 there, there, dynamics, mechanics, thunders, voices, this, that. That's what I was doing. I was identifying the prophet's message that it would stay alive. 
Praise. No devil couldn't tear it down. Praise God. And today it remains with the same power. Oh, hallelujah. And if you don't believe me, you watch a revival break out in here. Praise God. You watch the blind see. You watch the cripples walk. You watch the dead be raised up. Praise God. Amen. And you watch them pour them seven virtues in. And just as we are pouring in the seven virtues, the rest of these guys are going to start saying uh, the seven thunders uh, is under the seven seal or something. Brother, you're too late, man. Praise God. We're pouring in the virtues to the bride. Oh, hallelujah. Forget about it. That's been going on for 17 years. So this revelation is to build a pyramid of seven virtues in your hearts for charity to cap off a bride, the Holy Ghost itself coming right down in perfection and back to the word to manifest itself again. Amen. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. There's your charge. There you are. There's your message. Praise God. See, but it's got to be inspired to you. Praise God. And hearing my last quote here, hearing, recognizing, praise God. Do you love him? Do you know who you are? Do you know who's standing here this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Page 24. Hear and recognize and act on the word of God. Got to be inspired to you. The Holy Spirit has to bring it and make it manifest to you. Did you get it? The Holy Spirit has to bring it. Well, the Holy Spirit today is the angel. I mean, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is here to bring it. He's here. Because he said he's got to bring it and make it manifest to you. So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the angel with the book, open his hand, stand it. That's what's the matter today. You can't get up at this altar and say, well, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No. I remember a time in 1964 when our church was down there and Brother Branham preached the mighty God unveiled in Philadelphia. And we was the ones that was amen in Brother Branham. And then they had the nerve to think that we didn't understand that God was veiled. When we was the very one standing there. <laughs> I said, well, you kidding me or what? I said, it was Brother Coleman and his church, Brother Hunt. We was right there. When you hear, amen, that was us. Amen. Wasn't nobody else in the mess. It was us. Amen. So we understood that God was unveiled amen. long before these doctrines started. Long before that. 1964, God was unveiled. Our church went down. I'm bragging now on Jesus Christ. Our church went down to see the unveiling of the mighty God. Amen, Brother Nino. Everybody went down, they come back, they were scratching their head. I said, don't worry about it, I'll preach it to you next week, praise God. I'll tell you how God come down from his glory and went behind skin, praise God. Amen, and ripped down every veil, praise God. And that bleeding, bloody word went out. Hallelujah, praise God. And Brother Brown stood up on a platform, praise God, with all those full gospel prisoners behind him, didn't believe nothing. They were going to sleep, the sleeping virgins. And Brother Branham said, I'm identified with this group. I said, amen, Brother Branham, praise God. I was gone, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. I was a wild man, praise God. Amen. That's right, Brother Osei. Praise God. He said, I'm identified with him. Amen. You got to be identified. You got to be identified in the natural. You got to be identified in the spiritual. You're an American, praise God. You always was an American. Hallelujah. You have to receive of her glory and of her shame. Amen. And you identify with the church. This is our church here. Whatever goes on, we have to be identified here with it. Praise God. Yes, that come out of New York. Uh, well, yeah, okay, fine. This come out of New York too. And, and they're doing this here. And we're in cool lots. And yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. We, we, we identify with all that. We identify with the shame and the glory. Praise God. But, but what about them ceilings? What, what about the, uh, Brother Robledo getting sealed and Brother Belomo and, and all the rest of them getting a pow? Uh, we identify with that too, praise God. So it seems like we're doing something right for all the people to get sealed all across the world. Hallelujah, praise God. Hey, man, I was with George Washington when he cr cr crossed the uh, Valley Forge. 
Amen. I was with Paul Revere. Praise God. When he was riding the bridge, coming, the bridge, coming. Hallelujah. Were you there? I was with, in the Civil War. I was in World War I. I stood with Paul on Mars Hill. Oh, hallelujah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good now. I'm identified. You got to be identified with Christ and every word of God to know him from the beginning. Oh, come on, church. Say in your heart today, Lord, this is the last day that I want to know about you. I want to know you. I want to know you, Lord. It's not enough to know about you. I got to know you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's got to bring it. He's doing that right now. The unsealing of the living testimony under the seventh seal by the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, which is that angel. When a preacher preaches truth from the Bible, you'll love it. You reach for it, it's seven seal food for you, for your soul. It calls you to a jubilee time. That's what's the matter with the church there. You can't get up at the altar and say hallelujah or no. Oh, but brother, sister, when the Holy Ghost has inspired that word to you, you get it before you leave your seat. Something in you burnt up. Preacher won't have to tell you do this and do that. The old leaves just plop off. And new leaves will come on. It's inspired to you. You won't get angry with the preacher. Thank God. When he preaches truth from the Bible, you'll love it. Reach for it. It's your food for your soul. Holler. It wouldn't be wonderful if everybody in here didn't get mad with me for every sermon. I'm preaching the word. Are you you talking about the roof blowing off the lid up here? Oh, my God. Page 30. I say this in closing. And I say it too. Just one more remark. The real church is, has so much to live for. Live for. Yes, sir. So much to live for. Oh, it should be such a jubilant time for the real church, for the, the, the filled church, uh, an elected church. When you know in your heart you pass from death into life and to know him is life. Oh, to know him from the beginning. Praise God. And you look at yourself and see and watch your life and see all the things of the world has passed away that you become a new creature listen now and closing uh, closely you know that you pass your life proves now listen praise god yes sir hear me today now don't listen to this here and then go out and then spirits from the world begin to overtake you could be from entertainment from sports and different things and then you're caught with a spirit but go out of here today sanctified change i'm going to know him from the beginning praise god and watch that word that i'm speaking purify you and sanctify you yes sir yea saith the lord oh hallelujah may that go deep because you don't have much time when you look and see yourself, your life, and, the, and all the things the world has passed away, that you become a new creature. Listen down close, and you know that you pass. Your life proves it. By their fruits you shall know them. Your whole objective is Christ. You're looking for him to come at any time. You walk in the spirit. You love him. You see him working through you. Nothing that you desire to do, but just he just does it himself oh what a time oh what a time we have here jesus said that there'll be a form and a latter rain and the latter rain will produce both former and latter rain in the same season we had to end time such a jubilant time see you know you'll have knowledge and to know him is life eternal to know him from the beginning move up children little children move up young men move up move up to the fathers come see this man today praise God let him wash you in the blood so you can be adopted all oh, the time you see your name in the eternal section of the book of, the, of redemption do you know what I'm saying yeah. your name is in the eternal section can you see that clearly yeah. not just the book of life book of life you, you go over there to the second uh, resurrection somewhere but to know that he would put your name the angels right here 
wherever this, the, the, in other words, the manifestation is in this message, now you watch it. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. See me, but there's, uh, they're going to come today and, 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 and try to, you know, like the old Gibeonites, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the promised land. And uh, they come, they seen that uh, God surely was with Joshua in them. So they did some little double stuff there, you know. They got some old moldy bread and then the rags, you know, and they come along and say, we come from a far place. And now God didn't want that scene. And then they tricked Joshua in them, and they come from right around the corner somewhere. Just let the bread stay out there about four days and so forth and put some holes in their clothes, you know. And then God was mad about that, you see. So there'll be those who will come like they've been preaching this all the time. See, but I feel sorry for them because, see, there's got to be a manifestation. And it won't be there. That's where the angel will be with the manifestation, you see. Because, see, uh, the prophecy has come along now. And all, all the seeds together and all these things here. And all of a sudden, the angel will pull it out here, that bride. Oh, and then he'll stand there and the different groups will have to stay true. And then the signs and wonders and things that happen to them. So you don't have to fight nobody. So I may have finished June 12th. I mean, uh, yeah, June 9th. Finished 17 years. I'm so happy. Praise God. So happy. Yes, sir. So go down to Georgia, whatever Lord want me to do down there. I'm, I'm going down there to have a good time. Amen. Praise God. See, I'm free. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I'm free. Oh. I don't have to worry about those little spirits and this and that. I said, well, uh, you go to the angel. Don't tell it to me. <laughs> you go to the, the angel standing right there, and he, he'll solve all your problems. Amen. See, so don't, we'll have mind battle. But, well, he'll take care of all mind battles. You know what I mean? Yeah. No? The angel will do that. Amen. Not me. I can't take away a mind battle. You know what I mean? No? Fact, maybe God put the mind battle there for you. Amen. You're going to take away your blessing. Amen. Why take away your blessing? Try to get the metal to pray it away from you. Now, come on, uh, little uh, 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 Peters. I mean, move up to, to, uh, to Kia's. You know? <laughs> come on, where well, you can walk and talk. Eh? Amen. Oh, I'm finished. Praise God. So I say, what a time. You see your name in the eternal section of the book of redemption. Do you see that? Amen. How many see that? Amen. Oh, then I'm finished then. Amen. 17 years worth it. To get somebody from the book of life over to the eternal section. And take you, you go to the angel. Then it's not between you and Brother Coleman, it's between you and the angel. Then Brother Coleman finally can do what he has to do in his own church. Let's take care of them. Pour the seven virtues into them to the perfection. So I have to go somewhere where the Lord got to tell me, and that's it, the Lord to go there. Amen. But I'm here. We're here to help you. And I'm looking for a revival, a seven thunder revival, to wake her up again. Uh, it's not too old fashioned, and I still believe it. Amen. He said it, so shall it be. Amen. But he just wanted some brotherly kindness to drop down in it and stick to it. Amen. You see your name in the internal section of the book of redemption. You walk over to the angel and say, give me that little book with my redemption rights and my abstract title deed. Oh, what an hour of jubilee. Hebrews 13, 8. Do you believe it? Amen. Then hear it. Recognize it. Act upon it. And you'll be able to say, this day these scriptures is fulfilled in my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, come on, brother. Bloomer, you got something to shout about and sing here? Man, I'm free, man. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother Mara. Praise God for your stand way down in little sunny Italy. Amen. All you other believers, all you who've been traveling from Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and wherever you're coming from, God bless you. Praise God. I know I spoke some sharp things in there, praise God, and knocked you around here and knocked you around there. But, oh, God, I had a purpose for what I was doing, praise God. I was trying to shape and mold you and get you to a place, praise God, where you could see your name in that book. Hallelujah. 
And now I turn you over to the angel. Glory to God. Over to the angel. You have tapes, you have the message, you have everything. And all you need is a revelation that your name is in that book and that's it. Pray that does nothing else matters. My name is in the book. 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 I thought my own song up. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You like that? Like my chorus there? Oh, his name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. The name of the Lord is his mighty tower, and his name shall be praised. Glory! His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower, and his name shall be praised. Oh, his name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. His name shall be praised. For the name of the Lord is a mighty tower, and his name shall be praised. Come on, Brother Lomo. Shall be praised.